now's probably a good time to actually take a moment. We're going to talk about uh, how, to, how to connect to NERSC. But we've been sitting for about an hour, so it's probably a good time to stand up for just a moment, take a breath. Uh, a quick overview of options for connecting to NERSC systems. Uh, a little bit just uh, covering again something that Clayton mentioned about password resets and login failures, how to, how to solve problems. Uh, we'll look at NX, also called No Machine, as a way of getting a GUI, a persistent GUI session into the NERSC systems, and a walkthrough using SSH and MFA to log in. So, this is a rather busy cartoon with lots of logos on it. Uh, essentially, what we're saying here is that there are multiple entry points into NERSC systems. Uh, so down here we've got the primary NERSC systems, Corey and Edison. Uh, there's a couple of others that uh, some people may be using, uh, DeNovo and Genepool and PDSF. So they're the main points that you'll log in to actually run jobs. And there's a few ways of doing this. There's a few that we're not going to talk about just at the moment, but they will be covered later, uh, particularly things like uh, Jupyter and I think uh, yeah, Globus for data transfer will be talked about later on today. Um, Clayton uh, was just walking you through NIM just now. That doesn't actually log you into the systems themselves, but uh, it's a way of managing your information on the systems. Probably the, the ways that most people are going to log in most of the time is either directly through a terminal, generally with uh, some variant of SSH, or through no machine. And that also connects directly to the systems. So first exercise, I think just about everybody here has got laptops. Uh, point, point your web browser at uh, https nim.nersc.gov. And uh, this should be a, a familiar looking screen from the, the previous set of slides. Uh, something that I want to just reiterate and point out where it is that you can see here, circled in red, reset your NIM password. So if at any point you find that you're stuck because you've forgotten your password, haven't logged in for a while. Um, well, you can always uh, call account support and you know, contact us for help. But you can probably get there you know, a little more quickly and independently by going to NIM and uh, clicking on the reset your password link there. So the other thing is, uh, when you log into NIM using your into the NIM web interface using your um, NERSC username and, and your NIM password. Uh, again, as Clayton mentioned, that clears login failures. So, so what does that mean? Every now and then, uh, either you've left caps lock on or it's been a while and you've forgotten your password and you attempt to log in and you can't and you fail and it, uh, yeah, you try again. And if, if you uh, don't get the password right, a sufficient number of times in a row, uh, I think it's five, um, the system will lock you out. It assumes that this is probably somebody trying to hack your account. <laughs> and so as a, a protection against that, then you'll find that even when you do have the password right, you can't get in on the, on the terminal or uh, NX or something. So to solve this one, go to the web interface for NIM and log in. That's all you need to do. You log in, log back out, uh, and that um, verifies to the system that, yes, this is you, you're coming in from another point, you've remembered your password now, it can clear the login failures and you can log back in again. Good question. Yes. So I know one, <coughs> one exception that I've encountered that was yep. a little odd to me when I encountered it was that I, I made that mistake that I tried to log in five times, failed, got locked out. But yep. then uh, when I figured out what my password was, I was actually able to log into the Jupyter notebooks to like Jupyter Oh, that's out. interesting. So Jupyter might not uh, have the Jupyter was fine. to check against it. Um, and so I just wasn't sure if there was a reason for that. Or uh, I suspect that the reason is that the, uh, the 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 same check that is in the SSH logins and so on isn't, or at least wasn't there in Jupyter. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so next exercise, point your browser at https my.nersc.gov. There's also a link to this from the uh, main NERSC website under, I think it's the first 
item under the users submenu. So MyNERSC is kind of a handy site for getting you know, a little bit more specific and interactive information about the machine and your account. A couple of things that I want to point out first of all. So you can see in this screen, uh, the dashboard doesn't show very much. It's a little bit uh, small to read, but you'll, you'll see this when you go there the first time yourself. It says, please log in. That's because you can't actually you know, see the details of your account until you're logged in. Uh, and then up here, there's a, there's a button for signing in there. Uh, handy, what's going on with the system? If you attempt to log in and you can't and something seems broken and you didn't read the weekly email and say that there's a maintenance tomorrow, uh, and so you try to log in and it doesn't work, one thing that you can do to check is to go to mynurse.gov and there's a list of system statuses down on the side. So as well as other useful information, MyNERSC offers a couple of kind of entry points into the system as well. Uh, particularly, there's a link to Jupyter Hub and a link to the web interface to uh, NX, which is no machine. So the web interface isn't quite as uh, smooth and as fast as the client, but it's kind of a, you know, a zero overhead, very easy way of getting in with a uh, GUI just using your web browser. <coughs> Okay, so a few more words about NX or, or No Machine. Uh, this is, as a bit of an overview, kind of a, a slight cartoon of how X Windows works. In the top half of this diagram is what it looks like with a typical X session. So you've got the actual program that's running on the on the machine, such as on on Cori, and it's you know generating GUI items and it sends them to an X server, which is typically and traditionally running on your desktop or laptop, uh, you're driving the monitor in front of you, and it does all the drawings of the windows and so on like that. The thing is, this is a really talkative protocol, so there's a lot of traffic going backwards and forwards. So what NX does is it uh, steps around some of the problems that this can introduce over a slow network, by running the X server in a, in a persistent session on the NERSC side of the network. So it's much closer to the, to the machine. And then it uses a much less talkative, uh, you know, compressed and so on protocol to actually communicate with uh, your desktop and to you know, draw the windows on your screen. So reasons for using it. So sort of hinted at the, the first and biggest one already. X windows over a network is really slow. If you've tried to start even Emacs on a, on a not lightning fast network from a, a remote machine, uh, you'll have noticed that it can take anywhere between a few seconds and several minutes to draw the window up. So NX deals with this by uh, buffering and compressing the X messages, making for that much, much tighter, less talkative protocol and giving a, a better experience. So another thing in an X session, or in fact any session, even just a SSH session, is that if for, for whatever reason, you know, your laptop runs out of battery or it goes to sleep while you're going to have lunch or something like that, you log out, uh, you lose your session. But because the NX session is actually running on the NERSC side of the network, this is no longer necessary. The session can persist and you can just reconnect to it and it's you know, right where you left it. And I've walked through this in the opposite direction, so uh, broken connections. Uh, and the other thing about um, a persistent session and long running desktop is because you've got a GUI desktop you know, up and running on the NERSC side of the network, without needing to install an X server for yourself, you can run GUI applications, you know, MATLAB and so forth, on the NERSC systems. Okay, so what do you need to use it? It works on any desktop or laptop, so there are, there are clients for um, Windows, Linux and Mac. Um, you'll need to download the NX client software, so on NERSC's web Web pages, if you're uh, following along on the slides, there's some links you can click here, um, which take you to a, a, a trusted NX client or player, 
and also a configuration for using NERSC. Or the easiest way to do it is if you go to www.nurse.gov and up here in the search box type NX, it will almost certainly be the first thing that comes up, certainly within the, within the first uh, couple of search results. Okay, so NX is good for uh, most things, in fact, but sometimes it's convenient just to log in with a terminal. And all of our systems are available you know, through SSH. So what you'll need to use it, first of all, is some sort of a terminal program. If you're a Mac user, you're lucky. One comes built in. It's just called terminal. If you're a, a Mac power user, um, there's one that a lot of us at NERSC use called iTerm2, which is basically a nicer version of Terminal. It's a, got a few more features. If you're using Windows, uh, it probably doesn't come with a Terminal built in, uh, but a well-known and effective uh, program for doing this is called PuTTY. Stands for something, something to do with TTY. Uh, there's a link here to where to download it. It's a uh, it's not a very obvious looking link, uh, but the, this same link will come from something like www.putty.org. If you're using Linux, you're already a step ahead of the game. You've got terminals everywhere. You've, you've probably already got a favorite. You, you, you know your way around already. Uh, if you're going to use X forwarding, note NX is better than X forwarding generally because of that whole you know, lightweight versus heavyweight protocol. Then you'll also need an X server. So if you're using the Mac, I think about the only really uh, decent working X server for the Mac at the moment is XQuartz. For Windows, there's a few different options. Uh, SigWin X seems to be the most you know, long-term, persistently reliable and available one. And uh, Linux, once again, you're already a step ahead. The, yeah, X is how Linux does GUI, so you have an X server running already. Okay, so uh, client. Oh, yep. Question, um, about NX. Are there any clients for NX? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, if we go back to here, so if you do a search for NX, you can download a tested client for, I think, all three operating systems from the NERSC web pages. And the client is is the best way to use it. So the the web, in, like you, know, you can use it, you, you can run it in a browser by just clicking the link through from the My Nurse page, but you will get a much better user experience running the client. Uh, okay, so uh, Clinton mentioned about MFA. So we're in the early to middling stages of rolling in a multi factor authentication um, capability. The way this works for uh, at NIM is that you log in with one of the factors is your NIM password and the other is a one-time password that gets delivered to you by the Google Authenticator app on a smartphone. So to use MFA, you will need a smartphone. This is partly why it's uh, currently opt-in because yeah, not everybody has that access. Uh, Google Authenticator is fairly easily available. You can find it in the Play Store or on um, uh, iTunes. The advantage of using multi-factor authentication is because to log in, you have information coming from two sources, uh, it makes it much harder to hack your account. Somebody has to both know your password and have your phone. So it's currently opt-in via NIM. When you first log in, uh, MFA will not be enabled. Oh, but in a few moments, we'll go through the steps of how you can enable it. So just kind of a, an example of what it looks like when you're logging in. This is just using a, a simple terminal session. So if you're using terminal or, or putty. From your terminal, you'll have a prompt something like this. Our username here is Elvis. Uh, SSH-L and then your username, uh, NIM username and then the name of the system that you want to log into, cory.nurse.gov or edison.nurse.gov, etc. So what you'll see, once you have uh, some level of connection there, 
is a big uh, scroll of screen with this kind of a, a disclaimer. I snipped this short, it's a bit longer. Important stuff to read, it's, it's essentially saying, what is it essentially saying? <laughs> this is a, a computer facility for authorized users only, and, yeah, and et cetera. So then it will ask for your password, and this is your NIM password. So it's the same one that you use at the web interface for NIM. This is without MFA. After you type your password, uh, it'll sit and think for a moment, and then bring you into the machine. And first you'll see a great long scroll of text with the NERSC message of the day. And it's got a bunch of sections that give a, a little bit of overview information about the current state of the system. So this is a, a, a good hint as well if something doesn't seem to be working. Uh, there is a current status such as you know, compute resources, what's available, which file systems are available. Services, there's, uh, there's also a, a list of upcoming expected outages. So, this noisy but important, and yeah, you'll see it. If you're using X forwarding, which, yeah, again, NX is better. In a way, NX is kind of using X forwarding under the covers, but uh, to a, a more local um, X server. Then you'll need this extra option, dash Y. Uh, you can also use dash capital X, but dash Y is a little bit more forgiving of flaky connections. So SSH dash L, say Elvis, if my username is Elvis, dash capital Y, Corey.nursk. And then you'll have a session, you know, assuming that you have a uh, X server running. For this to work at all, you need to have an X server running on your, on your desktop, such as XQuartz. Uh, and then you can start GUI applications. In module load MATLAB, MATLAB, and you should see after probably several moments of um, communicating a screen something like this. So this all works when you're running uh, on NX as well. Okay, for a quick walkthrough of how to uh, enable and use MFA, there's a link up here if you're following through on the slides to the detailed help, which goes through step by step with um, diagrams of you know, what to click. First, you'll need to install Google Authenticator on your phone. Then enable it in NIM. So there's a submenu under, under actions here that says MFA opt in, opt out. If you try MFA and for some reason it doesn't work for you, uh, don't panic, you can just go back into NIM and opt out, and it's, it's immediate. So then you'll need your one-time password token. So from that, under the MFA opt-in, opt-out page on NIM, uh, oh, that's right, it'll ask you for your token, so you give it a name, this is you know, my iPhone, hit submit, and it will bring up a screen that looks kind of like this with a QR phone, with a QR code. And then if you open up Google Authenticator on your phone, uh, there's a, a big red plus button down the bottom, which is, you know, add another thing to authenticate to. And when you press that, it will look for a QR code to scan. And this is how the two systems link each other. So once, you, once you've done that, you're good to go. You can log in using MFA. So then you log in in, uh, currently MFA is a, uh, available for systems where you log in through uh, an SSH type login. So you'll start out very similar, you'll SSH to Corey, you'll get uh, all that uh, notice that you see, and now it will say password plus OTP. And that's literally what you type. You type your NIM password, and then you look at Google Authenticator, and it will have six numbers on the screen, and you type those six numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then enter. So this can become quite a lot of typing with passwords. So we have a, a little tip on the um, NFA, MFA usage page uh, in our web pages of how to set up a SSH setting called Control Master, which allows you to multiplex multiple SSH connections over the same SSH connection. 
which effectively means that you only need to type in your um, one-time password once, and then subsequent connections will continue to use that same session that you've started. Okay, so if you're not using MFA, uh, you might have used SSH keys before, which is another way of reducing the number of times you need to type your password in. Typically, when you're using SSH keys on a system, what you'll do is you'll put your public key into the .ssh directory on that system. This is not the case at NERSC. For security reasons, we ask you to put your public key instead into NIM, and the system will only accept public keys that are in NIM, not that are in uh, .ssh. So to do that, once you're logged into NIM, there's a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a menu bar item here called SSH keys. You click on that and you'll see a list of public keys and you can add one. Uh, I guess it probably helps to tell you where you find your public key. So once you've uh, created your key on your laptop, you'll have two files in your uh, .ssh hidden directory. One will be called idrsa.pub. This is important. The public one, the .pub, is the one that you want to copy and paste into here. So we have uh, some detailed instructions for actually how to set up SSH and uh, SSH keys at this address. One very important thing that I didn't mention before, when you're creating an SSH key on your laptop, uh, it will ask you for a passphrase for the SSH key. Please do use a passphrase. Um, yeah, we don't want unencrypted SSH keys accessing the system that yeah, undermines the whole security paradigm. So you do need a passphrase. Uh, with SSH, you can also uh, do some setup to reduce the number of times you need to uh, type your password by using an SSH agent. And the instructions for using an SSH agent are also under here. We're doing for time. We should be pretty close to the end, I suspect. So, just a quick summary and overview again. There are lots of um, methods for connecting to NERSC. When you're actually logging on to do jobs, most of the time you'll probably be using either a terminal or no machine. And hopefully, you have a, a good idea of how to do that now. Thank you.